right. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, having me. I'm Ian Douglas. I'm a senior developer advocate at Postman. I've uh, been on the Postman team since January this year, and I've spent a large portion of my career around uh, mentorship and the idea of technical education. And as an educator, I know that the worst time of day to try to give a talk is right after lunch when everybody's digesting food, and the second worst time is right before uh, everybody wants to leave and go to a reception and, and have something to drink. Um, so bear with me, and I'll, uh, I'll get through this as much as possible. Um, I do have a number of dad jokes on the slides, and I've got a whole bunch of these drink tickets to give away that I've been collecting throughout the day. So if you can count how many dad jokes there are on the slides, and come see me at the Postman booth, I'll give you an extra drink ticket. So that way you pay attention a little. Um, so my inspiration for this talk was uh, basically around the expectations that we write in our testing, but other ideas kind of came up as well. So if you grew up in a household like I did, uh, it wasn't just good enough to meet expectations. They, you know, Everybody wants you to sort of exceed those expectations and not just do the minimum. And so I should apply myself more, I should do more. I once passed a chemistry class with a 51% and my mom tried to make me take the class again. Um, but if, uh, if your company does performance reviews, you also wanna be viewed as kind of going the extra mile uh, and, and being that type of person on the team where you're gonna go above and beyond and not just meet expectations. Speaking of which, I've got a semi-annual review coming up pretty soon, so if you want to laugh really hard at the dad jokes that you see and make sure you clap really, really loud at the end uh, and, and go tell my boss's boss, uh, Ken Lane, you'll see him in the hat walking around, just let him know what a great talk this was. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. But really, this whole talk is going to be about API contract testing and the idea of what is an API contract and what are some different ways that we can do that testing. And we're going to talk a little bit about some tooling to simplify that process. So I'm going to give a brief intro into the idea of contract testing and then uh, sort of how to get your teams to work well together uh, around some of this tooling to get at some of these outcomes. I'm going to show a little bit in uh, Postman with some screenshots and some animations. Uh, we're going to look at things both on the API producer side as well as the API consumer side. So just for the sake of anybody who's not familiar with the term, I wanna make sure that we can kind of talk about like what is an API contract and just kind of level set on terminology. Most of us will think of an API contract as an agreement between the API producer and the consumer promising if you call this endpoint a certain way, we're gonna give you back a certain kind of response. Some developers that I've worked with think that the API contract is just the structure of that data in the response. Other folks on other teams like engineering teams or governance teams may think of that contract as this is how we want you to go build the API and these are the standards that we want you to follow. And really API contract envelops all of those. And so how do we do that testing? How do we make sure that these things are gonna work well together? Well, let's also talk about why we wanna do these kinds of tests, and that's gonna come around the idea of confidence and building up confidence between teams and confidence between us and our end users. So these are four areas I'm gonna to touch on really briefly. And if you could kind of imagine that all these circles kind of overlap in the middle in a big giant Venn diagram, it looked a little cluttered to, uh, to do that earlier. Uh, let me see if I can fix that cable. Um, but really we wanna sort of build up the idea of, of what is this confidence and how can we sort of gain trust or build up that trust between our teams and between our company and our users um, or whoever's using our API, you know, that's an internal team as well. So we're gonna start with the idea of the API definition. We're gonna go clockwise around this, uh, around this diagram. And in the examples today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about API, um, or open API rather. Uh, and that, but really, the idea of defining your API could cover any sort of specification. And this is whatever your team really wants to start out with uh, as far as the design phase of planning out your API. Um, so that could lead into then generating your documentation and code samples and so on like the previous talk. And then going clockwise around there, we've got uh, that we wanna check our design against our community standards. For example, the open API specification standards, like how do we actually test that what we're building conforms to those standards? Some tools are a little more forgiving around things like capitalization, but what if you forget a whole chunk of that specification that's really supposed to be in there? 
So we're going to look at some tooling that can lint that. And then from there, we're going to talk about the actual schemas of the data payload and, and so on that the end user is going to receive when they call those API endpoints and how we can start building up those tests, which are maybe also tests that those users can also run themselves as part of consuming your API. And then the last one in the bottom left, the governance bubble, is something new that we've introduced in Postman version 10, which we just announced last week. And that's the idea of building out some governance linting in the API builder as well, that your organization can define a list of governance rules, and you can then check that your API conforms to those rules. So let's go a little deeper on each of these. The first one that we're going to look at here is the overall API design. Now, whether you consider your company or your group or your team API first or not, you can still validate what you're going to be building. Given some recent API surveys, a lot of folks are going to be mostly building RESTful APIs. So again, I'm going to stick with the Open API uh, specification standard uh, for the next couple of slides. The teams who may typically spend time on this portion are going to be those who are implementing kind of the business rules and business needs uh, within that specification file. And then the teams who are doing the documentation and the testing to make sure that as they build that out, that things are working properly. All right, so the first one that we're going to look at is the, the API design. Um, So why is this part important? Why do we want to sort of check that, uh, that this validation is going to work well? Well, in my career, I've been doing development for about 26 years. And I've seen a scenario a bunch of times where one team is hard at work working on the specification while your testing and documentation teams are trying to figure out what do we put in the documentation and how do we make sure that these things stay synchronized. And oftentimes, there's been a lack of communication between those teams. So it could be that your documentation team doesn't know how to modify the specification files, or it could be that whichever team is, mod is actually uh, sort of generating those specification files don't want another team kind of stepping on their toes and making those changes. Um, or it could be that the, the folks that are doing the testing and documentation don't know the specification, they don't know what to change, and we want to make sure that, uh, that we're doing things properly. So in many cases, it's easier sometimes to sort of work backwards. What do, what do the documentation teams and testing teams want that end user experience to be? What do they want that payload of data to be, whether it's a JSON payload or a GraphQL response? Uh, you know, what, what do they want that to be? And then how can we sort of walk that backwards into the specification? And so validating the design of the API is going to be really important from that perspective and making sure that, uh, that those two teams stay synchronized on what it is that they want. You want to make sure that your documentation is accurate, because users are going to care a lot about that. But you also want to make sure that your specification is, is still being maintained properly as well. So at the heart of this entire portion of the validation uh, tip today is honestly going to be communication. It seems like that should be understood well enough to uh, not be spoken, but there it is. Um, and the first tip that I'm going to give you on this is to have your team members who are experienced with building up these API specifications is to keep working on those files. Whether you consider your company to be API first or not, there's still going to be some sort of feedback loop and iteration and so on uh, around improving that design. And we shouldn't have to worry about other teams wanting to make changes to our specification. But we do need to get their input on what it is that they need that end user experience to be. Because maybe the people working on the uh, specification don't have a, a good idea of like, what the final output to the end user is going to be. Now, these API design files and specification files, uh, such as open API or proto files, if you're working on gRPC, uh, GraphQL responses, and so on, they often have very rich tooling around them to build out the documentation and the code samples, very similar to you heard in the, uh, what you heard in the previous talk, maybe even scaffolding some server-side code or client-side SDKs. So we need a good way to communicate these changes between the teams so that they can work on updates and, uh, and, and so on within these specifications. So on this screenshot, I'm demonstrating how a team has imported an open API specification and have built out some example responses. Uh, 
And what they're doing is they're going in and they're making a change saying, ah, I don't want an array of objects. I just want to build this out as an array of strings. And inside the Postman interface, we actually have a way that you can validate that example against what the Open API specification says it's supposed to see. And so what we can see here is the linter inside of Postman that's going through and showing this is what it was supposed to be, this is what I got, and giving you a nice diff uh, output, similar to what you might see in uh, uh, working with Git or other co uh, code tooling tools, which can look at differences between text outputs. From here then, you can sort of take these changes and decide, well, do we need to change the specification or do we, you know, do we have to go back to the documentation team and say, we actually can't make this change. We understand you want to make this change, but we need to keep the specification this way for these reasons and you're going to have to modify what that end user experience is going to be. So now at this point, your teams are going to be better aligned with each other. And your users are going to have a better overall experience as well because your API is going to behave precisely the way that the end documentation is going to uh, be built out using these specifications as you're using these tools that do automatic generation of your docs, automatic generation of code samples and SDKs and so on. So when we think about, well, how is this exceeding expectations? That was the whole point of this talk. Well, common sense would say, you know, how, how well do these things stay synchronized between teams? And I can tell you from experience, these things quickly go out of sync. And so having some tooling built directly into Postman to allow you to sort of lint this and check this is a great way to sort of expose where these problem areas are so that your documentation does stay up to date and your end users have a better experience. So now that you have your API design team and your documentation and testing teams working well together, uh, is that API design actually conforming to those industry best standards and best practices? So for example, if, uh, if we go back to the open API spec that I just showed, is that actually conforming to what the open API spec even tells us to do? But does that even matter? Like when it comes to the idea of contract testing, does it matter that we follow these industry standards? And yeah, it matters, right? I wouldn't have it on a slide today. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it matters because it ensures that your API follows those industry best standards. I mean, there, there's a reason that we call them best practices. And yes, there's always going to be some amount of deviation, but we want to make sure that as we build out these APIs, that we're sticking to what the industry sort of says, this is how we should build things. This is how we should build our APIs. What this does is it builds up trust and speed by making your API feel more familiar to them based on other APIs that they've used. If you define an, uh, an API specification which is supposed to be RESTful, then it should feel like other RESTful APIs. If you define a GraphQL API, it should work and feel very similar to other GraphQL APIs. This familiarity then also speeds up what we call time to first call. So when developers feel that sense of familiarity and your API feels intuitive, they're gonna be able to implement it much faster. And especially when these teams are internal teams within your company, that speed can be really important. So you want that to be as fast as possible. It can also improve how well your specification can then be imported into other tooling, like we just heard about in that previous talk, around how do we take this specification and generate these code samples, generate our documentation? How do we get people using this in a faster way? So one of our teammates at Postman, his name is Jordan, actually came up with a, a, a workspace that you, can, uh, that you can take a look at, and you're welcome to come by the booth and talk to us about this. And this will basically go through and look at your open API specification file in this case, and it'll actually go through and scrape the open API spec, and it'll actually automatically generate dozens or hundreds of tests within Postman to make sure that how you've designed your open API specification actually conforms to that spec. What does, what does the Open API Standards Committee say your Open API, file, Open API specification file should look like? And it'll grab even very nitpicky details, like you didn't capitalize this thing. Hopefully it's gonna catch like you're missing this whole block, but it's also gonna find very little, 
you know, bits of information as well. And we can kind of see here that I've introduced some errors, and so we see some errors cropping up, and we can expand and see what those problems were. And again, now we can go back and we can tweak our specification file and make sure it's conforming to those standards. Now, if it's something nitpicky like capitalization, does that really matter? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, as I said earlier, like some tooling are going to be pretty forgiving about some of the little nitpicky things. But at the end of the day, your users are going to be more confident about this because they know that you've conformed to this standard. Your team knows that all of this actually conforms to the standard. And then other tooling that they need to use with that specification is, is potentially going to work better. So now we're going to get into the tooling around what about the end user experience? What is that going to look like? And this is where Postman got its start so many years ago, was just the API response testing. So yep, your users could import a spec file or read through your documentation, or you know, oftentimes they'll build out their own JavaScript tests within Postman using your API. But wouldn't it be more helpful and a better user experience if you wrote those tests for them? If they're going to import your collection and fork your collection anyway, like what if that collection already came with tests? So we have a lot of APIs in our public API network. So many great businesses have taken time to build out those collections, build out those workspaces and environments that users can fork, full of examples, and they've used Postman to generate that documentation with code samples where a user can, you know, fork this thing down, set up their authentication, click on a button, and they see your API in action. If you took it a step further and made sure that your users also had tests in that collection, then as they run through things, they can see like an extra level of confidence that, okay, this is actually working the way that the company says that it should work. By providing those tests for them in the Postman collections, you're going to save your end users that extra step of verifying it themselves, like is this actually what we should be getting. Now they can always go in and certainly tweak things and add their own testing and so on, but if you can take that extra step, again, it just elevates that experience for your user, and they're going to have a better sense of confidence in what you do. So in this animation, we've added a JSON schema layout in our test. And I know it's a little hard to see uh, given the size of the room, but what I've imported in here is a JavaScript library called AJV. Um, now we're also doing a line of code in here which uses the Postman library that basically says, based on the schema that I defined at the very top, like I'm supposed to have these fields and this field is a string and this field is a Boolean, that we can do just a quick yes or no. Like does the response that we get back in Postman match that schema? And it's literally just a Boolean, like, yes or no. The AJV library will actually take that a step further and actually let you go very deep into figuring out, does that conform? And if not, what happened? Now, if you've got an array of objects, it's going to go through each of those items in the array, and it's going to give you the same error over and over. And so as you console log these things, you can end up with a lot of output. But at the end of all of this, if I go in and I made a change to say, you know, the, you know, whether this book was checked out instead of being a Boolean, if I said that should be a string, if I'm getting back a list of 100 books, I'm going to get back 100 errors saying this one was supposed to be a Boolean, this one was supposed to be a Boolean, this one was supposed to be a Boolean, and so on. And so this AJV library is extremely powerful. And we've actually replaced uh, some of our documentation where we used to recommend a different JavaScript library called TV4. And now we, we promote the AJV library. And so it's built directly into the Postman sandbox. You don't need to do anything extra. You just have to make the call to uh, instantiate it and start using it. In fact, the previous contract test generator library that I showed you that's going through and scraping that open API specification and generating those test files actually uses AJV. So there's a lot of power in there. And, and what Jordan built out in, in his workspace was using AJV to uh, go dynamically build more and more tests and then calling those tests and so on. So there's a lot of power in, in AJV. Um, now, I've seen a lot of front end teams use these schema tests. Uh, and also, based on these schema tests, go build a mock server. And this also increases productivity, but that's a whole other talk around how front end and back end teams can use mock servers uh, based on this. But by having these tests inside your collection, then 
you're giving your users an extra level of confidence that when they fork your collection and they go make those requests, they see all this test code in here and they know that the response they're getting back actually matches what you intend to do. All right, so that's a lot so far. We're almost done. Something new that we released in version 10 of Postman that we announced last week is governance rules. And this is gonna allow your team to go in and add uh, rules about what you want uh, the design and, and sort of shape of your API to be. Um, and so we're gonna go into why this is an important part of doing this because governance is an important thing. The whole point of standardizing your APIs within your organization is to build a common goal and that common interface and build all of your APIs with sort of like a common voice. So we recognized as a company that this was such an important part to help organizations and sort of bring you along uh, and sort of help you understand what, uh, what governance was all about and how to start building this into your API that we actually built this directly into the interface. But who does this really help? I mean, the confidence level here that we want to improve is initially going to start on the business side, that the business can start building up that trust and confidence that because they're setting these governance rules in place that the team that's now building the API can check against those governance rules to make sure they're doing things properly. And when the business team starts looking at the results of those uh, governance rules passing, then they know that the team is actually following what they're, what they're saying to do. So let's take a look at how this works. There's gonna be three screens of animations here. So within the Postman interface, if you go to home, there's an option on here to go to API governance, and you're gonna see a list of common rules. Now these rules are rules that Postman has built into a library that you can access to basically say, these are things that Postman thinks you should have as far as governance. But there's a big orange button in the middle there that says, go create uh, a new rule. And this is gonna use spectral. So we don't, we don't use the entirety of the spectral system. We do have like a small subset of those commands that, that we will accept. And uh, we can show you some documentation on this back at the booth. And what this will allow you to do is build your own spectral rules around the idea of governance and what you want that governance to be within Postman. We do something similar as well with API security. You can also access, access that from the home tab Right under where it says API governance, there's an API security. Again, this is version 10 specific. Um, and you can go in and you can also set up API security rules in the same way. So if you're curious about this, if you happen to see Arnaud walking around, he's our API handyman. Uh, this was basically his summer project. He spent the summer figuring out how to build these things in, how to add this through Spectral, and how to allow organizations to come in and add their own uh, governance rules. So on the next screen here, this is where as a user now I'm coming in and I'm modifying my API and working through Postman on this. And we can start to see things get flagged right away like this doesn't match the governance rules. So it's doing immediate linting as soon as you start making changes. It'll tell you down at the bottom of the interface whether it's breaking any rules or not. So if you go in and make a change, you can see right away that something happened. And then from there, those links uh, of around like this broke Here's a link to the documentation. The documentation will actually give you a bit of a description about what happened. Now, keep in mind, this is just a linting scanner for these predefined rules. It's not gonna offer suggestions on how to fix the problem. So your team is still gonna have to have an understanding and good communication between the business needs and what they're actually developing to figure out how should we actually fix this. So again, it's a good tool for communication and collaboration between your teams. So whether you're API first and you're building this out to begin with, or this is something that you're gonna kinda add on later because you've already been building an API and you wanna move towards API first thinking, now you can start adding these governance rules and make sure that what your team is building is actually conforming to those rules. So the good news is you can do all these things within Postman. The bad news is that of the four things that I've shown you, three of them work in version nine and three of them work in version 10. So the very first screenshot that I showed you where it was validating the specification and, uh, and, and the saved example responses, uh, that's only available in version nine. That's no longer available as of version 10. Uh, 
And in version 10, we've added the idea of the API governance and API security. That's not going to be backward compatible within version 9. Another great thing that we introduced is the Postman CLI. So it's a new command line interface that we've built out. Um, and so you can do these validations using Newman or the Postman CLI. If you're familiar with Newman, it's just a terminal application that you can run and you can actually execute this as part of CI CD pipelines. So if you're using something like Circle CI or Jenkins or Travis CI, any of those tools, um, even GitHub Actions, you can go through and you can say, go run Newman, go run this collection. But now we have the Postman CLI as well. And there's some caveats. Again, there's some differences between these two applications. Newman, for example, can still go run your collection of requests. So any JavaScript testing that you put in there, your pre-request scripts and your test scripts, those are still going to continue to work within Newman. So all of those associated scripts and so on, that's still going to work. But Newman will not do the API governance and the API security. That's reserved for the Postman CLI. The Postman CLI is also going to go through and do all of the collection runner and so on as well. So there are no deprecated features uh, that I'm aware of right now within Postman CLI. It's just it's going to be uh, something new that we've added where you can also do the API linting. And there's a little bit easier workflow as far as the authentication and, and keeping track of who you are within the terminal and, and so on for, uh, for logging into Postman and keeping track of your API key and such. So at the end of all of this testing, we have business leads who are more confident that what they needed, to, uh, what they needed the API to do has been designed well and is following those industry best practices. Your teams are going to be more confident about what they're building because they can run testing to ensure they're doing things within that correct mindset, correct direction, building things that the documentation is going to specify to your end users. And ultimately, those end users have confidence in your ability to produce high-quality APIs through the client-side testing and showing that your team has been thorough and diligent uh, by conforming to those API specifications as well. So that's it. So feel free to come by the Postman booth, ask us lots of questions about these features and other things in version 10. Uh, and so I'm all done. So make sure you clap really hard, make sure you tell your boss I did a good job. And uh, if you were counting all the dad jokes on the slides, if you come by the booth and tell me how many dad jokes you saw, I got some extra drink tickets for the reception and uh, we'll wrap up with that. So, thanks folks. If you have questions, I'm happy to take questions here, or I can just take questions at the booth. If you're like me, we can just get out of here. All right, thanks, everyone.